What's going on ladies and gentlemen, Twigger here with another high ELO commentary game. This time going to be featuring the odd one playing a jungle Elise this game. Very excited to see his Elise. I have watched it quite a few times and he is quite incredible with her, especially the steals on things like Baron and Dragon that he's managed to accomplish with her repel. So should be a great game. I, I always love commentating the Odwin games because he is just such a technically skilled jungler. Um, not always the most impactful jungler, but um, certainly does provide a whole lot of support out of that jungle and can sometimes really make himself a damaged threat. Um, I believe he's he's been streaming a heck of a lot more recently, so really glad to see that he's uh, giving a lot back to the fans because they are currently um, on the downtime in the LCS season and out of worlds and things like that. So he's just been able to kind of chill, and it's good to see that Tim, people like him and Dyrus are both streaming quite a bit and letting the fans know that they are still alive and um, are still owning up the solo queue. So a great thing about this game as well is that there is, as you guys can see, a jinx in this game. Um, this is Diamond League. Um, you know, actually, I don't know if the odd one is Diamond or Challenger. I should have looked that up before I started. This either Diamond or Challenger. I know he's he's definitely up there. But um, it's going to be great to see a high-level Jinx player and uh, what they can accomplish. Because Jinx has only been out for a couple weeks now, um, if even a couple weeks. Um, so it should be good just to see what kind of build uh, Jinx ends up making. Is it better than what everybody else is doing? Um, is it completely different? Are they going to do something completely out of the box? Are they going to build her fairly standard? I have no idea, but it'll just be nice to see a very high ELO player um, playing that new champion just to see and learn from uh, from what the pros are doing. But it looks like Karma is getting a little bit caught out here. The Jarvan flag going to be coming down, and there's the charm. A great charm landing from the Ari in the first blood. Going to be going to the support Blitzcrank. Not exactly the person that you wanted that first blood on, but, you know, getting first blood on a support is never really a bad thing because they are going to be able to go back and build that Philosopher's Stone very early. Um, really is going to make a pretty big difference in that bot lane. And it makes a big difference in the support's life, too. Getting some early gold means they're going to be able to pick up more wards. means it's going to be generally better for your team overall. So Jarvan counter-juggling the Alban a little bit. Actually going to leave one of the small golems up. Um, well, not small golems, small lizards. Uh, you very rarely see that nowadays, um, just because people do really want to know those timers and want to be able to counter-jungle again, but I guess Jarvan just wants to uh, really annoy the Alban, probably not planning on counter-jungling again very much. Um, so he probably just wants to really hinder the odd one side of the jungle. Um, but it looks like Blitzcrank might be taking a little bit of heat here, but the odd one does not have his cocoon, so isn't really going to be able to chase this one. Um, there is a pink ward for the blue team in that brush, and it looks like the odd one might get caught out a little bit here. Gets charmed and taking a lot of damage. Ignite already down. Going to try to flash into the Nidalee, but that's not really going to do a whole hell of a lot, so odd one's going to be following there, giving up that second kill. Um, a lot of people being involved in that one as well. Two assists plus the kill. Already looking like a, a not a great start for the odd one and this red team. 4.7k to 3.6k. Not exactly the position that you want to be in starting a game off and only being three minutes in, but you know, you kind of got to deal with the cards that you're dealt. So hopefully we can see a little bit of a pickup. Elise is a very, very strong champion even without items. Um, that's what makes her such a strong champion is that just getting those early magic pen items means that she's going to be doing a lot of damage and then she just needs to build a little bit of tankiness um, for her to really have an impact on the game. So not overly concerned about the odd one dying a little bit early because I feel like he's got the skill to kind of come back in this and utilize that champion to her fullest. Um, I'm very kind of interested to see how this bot lane is going to play out because we do have the two, I'm going to call them the two hookers. We have the two hookers in the bottom lane and I'm not talking about Jinx and Caitlyn. Oh, but yeah, we do have the two uh, people from Hook City there, Thresh and Blitzcrank, um, both providing their own kits that uh, really make for different lane styles. So um, Blitzcrank going to be able to pull one of those people in right away immediately, but Thresh kind of providing a little bit more CC in his kit um, with the flay and the constant CC of the dragging back with the death sentence. So I'm interested to see which one kind of prevails here because... Um, I know in solo queue, those two very, very rarely get through. Thresh especially. Blitzcrank does come through a little bit more frequently, but Thresh is almost always banned just because of how many amazing plays he can make. But as we're talking about this bot lane, it looks like the odd one is starting to make his way down. Going to see if he can actually do anything here. 
Sorry about that, folks. Just had to pause the game for a second there. Just in time for this gank, though. Looks like the odd one doing as much damage as he can to the Caitlyn. The exhaust was down. It's going to be a very easy kill for the odd one. Glad that I came right back for that time. Had to pause the game just to uh, answer the door, which was very unfortunate timing for somebody to come to my door. But anyways, we did get that gank in. Looks like the odd one picking up a kill. Going to set him a, a little bit, not ahead, but get him right back on track to uh, where he should be. Um, is still behind that Jarvan. The Jarvan sitting there with a kill and an assist with a couple more uh, CS than him. But overall, he's still not doing too badly. And he he should hopefully be able to make a, a bit of an impact on this game. Looks like the Blitzcrank taking a bit of damage here. Uh, going to try to get that stun down, but it is not going to happen. But they did activate the shield. And oh, what a great Blitz pull. The exhaust going down onto Jinx. And she had to flash away from that. I think Jarvan might actually be able to pick this one up. The red buff is procced on her. And it's probably going to be a kill for this uh, this Jarvan. But it looks like a great barrier, but the flay going right into Jinx, and that's going to be a dead Jinx. It was a great pull from the Blitzcrank on that one, um, because it happened right when Jinx actually hit Blitzcrank, so the tower aggro was on Jinx. So, once again, Jarvan being in the right place at the right time, getting himself another kill, and Blitzcrank picking up a lovely little assist for that. Cool thing about this game, too, just uh, talking about some unconventional picks here. Rengar versus Karma. You very rarely see Rengar nowadays in that top lane. He was incredibly strong way back when, but uh, now being kind of under the radar. But uh, Karma also very, very rarely being seen in, in the game in general, let alone up in the top lane. Um, I remember... Oh, it was from Alternate Gaming, the top laner um, in the EU LCS. Uh, oh, I'm not even going to remember his name. That's going to drive me nuts. Started with a K or something like that. Well, I'll put that down in the comment section below because I just, I cannot think of it right now. It's probably going to come up like the majority of the way through the game. It's going to be like at the very end. I'm just going to blurt out his name. But seeing Karma up in the top lane, very cool. She is actually, I find, to be a very, very good champion if played correctly. Um, her shield, when you use Mantra on that, can shield your entire team. Incredible for team fights. She does have a lot of harassment and burst damage coming out of her Q when you ulti that one. So, she does have a lot of potential, I find, but, um, it does take quite a bit of skill to, uh, actually win in a lane against, especially somebody who has so much damage, like a Rengar, uh, for him to just jump on a squishy like Karma, so it'll be very intriguing to see how that one lines up. I actually I don't have these things correctly positioned. Karma's up in the top, and Italy is in the mid. There we go. Thanks for telling me, guys. Jesus! But looks like the Blitzcrank grab did fail on that Jinx. Gonna be putting a little bit of damage onto the Caitlyn. And it looks like Nidalee is getting caught out here. Jarvan gonna get the knock up in. Nidalee trying to jump over. Flashes over the wall. But the flash coming out of the Elise. Uh, sorry, the Ari as well. Picking up that kill on Nidalee. And now the Odd One's in a little bit of a predicament. She doesn't have any more of her ultimate left. So she's gonna have to... Kind of play this one careful because now Jinx is here. Gets a slowdown onto Ari. The blue buff has been picked up. It was picked up by the Odd One. But it looks like the Jarvan is gonna be taken down here. Hopefully the Jinx is gonna pick this one up. Or is she? There we go. The odd one is actually going to flash and pick that kill up. Caitlyn is now here with Blitzcrank. Caitlyn's going to have to flash away from that one. The uh, Flay coming out of the uh, flashed Thresh going to pick up the Caitlyn for the double kill on the odd one. Very glad that the ELO commentary is all about the odd one. and He's the one picking up the kills. Hopefully he can carry this team to victory. But the Ari actually not going down in that one. I was quite concerned that she was going to be the one to die first. But managed to get away from that one. And the Jarvan took the, uh, the brunt of the damage from the red team. So, picking up a couple kills, 4-3. to three. It's now 11.2k to 10.9k, so only a 300 gold difference now separates these two teams, which is a much, much closer game than what we previously had um, at about 3 minutes, being almost at more than 1,000 gold ahead. So, hopefully we should see a much closer game with, hopefully, some more action, because these... Uh, Little action sequences have been quite phenomenal. And the odd one picking up two kills. He's now sitting at a pretty 3 1 0. Um, still has less assists than the Jarvan, but the gold should be pretty uh, pretty close, I would think. It is 27 to 28. So the odd one now pulling ahead of the Jarvan. Great to see because he is the, uh, the feature film <laughs> for this high yellow commentary. And he has managed to pick up his, um, his orb. I'm not even going to remember that. Spirit Stone, there we go. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the the orb, that thing. The Flash coming out of the Rengar to get out of that second damage proc of the Q from being Mantra'd. We can already see a lot of damage coming out of that Karma and being able to actually harass Rengar out of lane. Now, it does always help being arranged against a melee champion, but 
Um, with a Brutalizer already picked up from the Rengar, I would have thought that maybe he would have been able to harass her a little bit more, jumping out of those brushes, but not going to be the case. He's doing a... Uh, a good job of keeping up in CS, still behind the Karma, but Karma's just been doing a great job of landing those cues, getting the harass down, and making sure that uh, Rengar can't come ahead. That was a great play right there! Having that Lancer down after getting pulled from the Blitzcrank, an immediate counter, even before the Power Punch could come up. Uh, Jinx was already out of there through the Thresh Lantern, so very nice little uh, counter to the Blitzcrank with that Thresh Lantern. And nice reaction time from the Jinx to be able to click that so quickly. Um, one thing that we are seeing a lot more nowadays in the game are these uh, AP Nidalees in the mid lane. Um, she's become much more popular. She does have, once she hits 6, great wave clear and amazing roam potential. Um, very easy in Cougar form to just jump your way down to bot lane or to top lane or even roam in the jungle to try to uh, maybe pick a fight alongside your jungler. Um, she does have a little bit of a weaker uh, level 1 through 6, I would find, um, just because it's it, it is, it's not hard to last hit with her, um, but it's not nearly as easy as when you get your uh, your level 6. But it looks like we're going to have a fight in this bot lane. Jarvin coming in, probably going to pop his ultimate on this rush, I would think. The great stun coming down from the Jinx, and the odd one is now fighting the Ari up in the top lane, but Rengar is here also. This is turning into a very, very big fight. Nidalee's here as well. The Charm landing onto the Arwen. Going to be taken down from the R. The Ignite going down, but the Mega Bomb hitting the Blitzcrank and taking him down. Looks like we still have a bit of a fight going down here. The Caitlyn ultimate coming out. Not enough to kill the Nidalee yet, but the jump should be up for Rengar, but he is out of range. This should be a free Nidalee here. Going to be able to run away from that one. Currently just one for one. The odd one for the Blitzcrank. So not really the worst thing, but a great Nidalee Spear making this dragon pretty much impossible for Jarvan to take. Very, very good play on the Nidalee's part, making sure that uh, no more objectives could be taken off of the Odd One dying. The Charm missing from the Ari. So overall, not a horrible fight there. I thought it was going to be much, much worse for the Red Team because the Rengar did roam down and end up being a 5 versus 4 fight while the Karma still pushing the top lane. And it managed to just be 1 for 1, and they took down the top lane turret. So definitely a 1 fight for the Red Team there. 16.2k to 15.5k, so for the first time, well, probably not the first time in the game, I probably just haven't commented on it, um, they are now in the gold lead, and it looks like they're going to be opting for a dragon here, the odd one is back and his smite is available, and the Jarvan is nowhere to be seen, he's coming back from the base, so Blitzcrank doesn't even have this warded, so this is going to be a very free dragon for the red team, increasing that gold lead, and now having almost a 2k gold lead against this blue team. Very nice to see. Great plays coming out of these guys. And Karma knowing that she didn't need to go down there. She really couldn't have gone down there because she doesn't have a teleport. But knowing that she can just shove that lane out amazingly with those Montred Qs and push down that top turret. So first turret of the game going to the red team. Did not expect that. And it looks like we have Rengar once again roaming down while Karma's pushed up to her turret. But this just means that Karma's going to be able to farm with no pressure. And Rengar is going to slowly but surely start falling a little bit behind this Karma already down two levels to the top lane karma so something you definitely have to pay attention to and just looking at the cs in a couple of these lanes nidalee at 107 to the 76 of ari now it does make up for the fact having two kills and two assists but when we see the gold difference 4000 to 4000 those kills really aren't adding up to the huge cs difference that nidalee's been able to accrue just from staying in lane and making sure that she clears and we also have another, not a huge difference, but um, definitely a difference, 97 to 73 in the top lane for the Karma. So once again, just having that little bit of a gold lead for this uh, purple team is meaning they're going to be getting into their items quicker and they're going to be able to team fight um, with stronger champions. Um, whether or not they win the team fight, that's all up to skill and how the teams coordinate with one another. But having the better items certainly helps. Uh, makes it so you can make a couple mistakes and still come out ahead in a team fight, but Rengar is going to have to figure out something here. He has not died, but he is losing his lane. And Jinx is doing, currently, a great job. Caitlyn sitting at 0-2-2, so hasn't really been a large factor in this game for the bot lane, but Jinx sitting at 1-1-3, done quite a bit for the team, and um, currently landing her, uh, her big bombs, so... That's really what she needs. I've still yet to see um, in any of the games that I've seen a Jinx in, I've yet to see a cross-map bomb, which I'm very excited to see at some point. So hopefully we can see one of those. There's the bomb going out. Not going to be enough to kill the Blitzcrank. His mana shield is down, but uh, just was not enough damage to take him down. She is sitting with a finished Bloodthirster, though. But here comes the Caitlyn Ultimate. The Ari's coming out as well. The 
Charm has not been used, but that's going to be enough to take down the Thresh. The Charm being used now onto this uh, Jinx. There's the ultimate coming out of the Jarvan, but an immediate Flash coming out of Jinx. Going to get out of that one and not die. Very good reaction time from the Jinx. But um, Flash for the Jarvan ultimate, definitely worth it in their opinion. Um, the Rengar now in a bad position. You're getting stunned up, but the Karma's not going to be able to follow up on that one. Taking a lot of damage, that Rengar, but... Uh, certainly not enough to finish him, but he's now kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Going to flash over, and the Nidalee is now in a bad position. Takes down the Blitzcrank, which is quite incredible. And oh no, honestly, going to get the double kill on the Rengar. Definitely worth it for that Nidalee jumping in there and taking quite a few kills. Um, can't believe that she was managing to still do damage over all that CC. The odd one coming in, going to flash over the wall to try to take down this R. She is out of mana. She does not have a flash, and she does not have her ultimate, so she's just going to sit back and let the odd one just take her down. The Alma just having a great, great shot uh, with that Cocoon, um, knowing that she was being in that area and then just being able to flash over and get a free kill. So the odd one sitting at 4-2-0. Um, the Ari, she does have quite a few items. She's going to be very, very scary, but we're still seeing the red team increasing that gold lead, sitting now at um, now 3,000 gold uh, in the lead over this blue team, which at the beginning of the game, it was very much in favor of the blue team. So... It's become a very, very interesting game, and the Odd One is currently doing a great job, so very glad to be uh, commentating on a game where the Odd One does very well. I always like it when uh, the person that I'm commentating on is the one who's making very large impacts in the game, or should at least make very large impacts in the game. But the Nidalee now coming up in the top lane, going to try to get as much farm as she can up here. I'm um, just increasing that uh, that CS differenti differential. Is that even the right thing? The difference in CS. <laughs> the gap is getting much larger between Ari and Nidalee. And um, even Jinx is now starting to pull a little bit ahead, being 10 CS above the Caitlyn. Probably going to even that up a little bit after this wave, but Ari taking a spear to the face. And the Nidalee trying to throw out as many spears as she can, but not currently going to land any more than that one. Jarvan sitting with the double buff, and uh, Ari does have her blue buff as well, so her picking up... Um, her blue buff, and I think Jarvin getting a kill got him that blue buff. An uh, Oracle is being popped for the Blitzcrank at 16 minutes, sorry, 17 minutes into the game. Going to start clearing out some things. Dragon should be coming up fairly soon. Oh, there's the ultimate from Jarvin coming out, bursting another flash. And it looks like Ari is using her ultimate to try to get in here. I think that was a bit of a miscommunication on her part. Um, thought that Jarvin might have kept going in on that one, but that was just a wasted ult from Ari to try to either catch that karma. But... Great grab coming out of the Blitzcrank. The Charm misses, though, and it's not going to be enough to kill the Nidalee. The Caitlyn ultimate coming out, though, and it went all the way through, but the heal, wow, the heal from the Nidalee saving her life and not dying to the Karma ultimate. A great big bomb coming out to kill the Rengar, and it looks like everything is just going wrong for this blue team during this fight. The Blitzcrank has to flash over the wall to try to get rid of the odd one, but a Thresh grab is going to give double kill to Jinx, and it looks like Caitlyn is being chased out now with the speed boost from the Jinx, and the W is going to land, killing the car, the Caitlyn, and now it looks like the uh, Ari is going to get cocooned up by the odd one, and there's going to be another kill for the red team, and Karma is going to survive with that shield from the Thresh and her own shield. There's four kills for the price of none. That's a great deal, no matter how many times you slice it. Great amount of teamwork in that team fight for the red team. Very, very lucky for that Nidalee not dying to the Caitlyn ultimate because of a very, very clutch heal. I think there might have been a Karma shield coming out of that one as well. It might have just been that, but very, very clutch not dying to that one. And it's always great to see a team fight that goes well for one team and seeing the team that won being at such low health, meaning that it, they microed very, very well and that they knew when to back out, they knew when to keep going, knowing how much damage they're going to take. It was very, very well-organized fight for that red team. And now we're sitting at 29k to 23.5k. We're starting to see a very big difference. And now we're getting into, we're going to be nearing after this dragon, the 10k gold difference. And it gets to that point where it's going to start becoming a little bit insurmountable. Insurmountable. But it looks like they're trying to get onto this Blitzcrank. The Repel going down, and that is going to be a kill for the odd one. A great Q coming out of the uh, the Karma, which it was not mantra but um, doing as much damage as they could to Blitzcrank over the wall. The Thresh going over to give the odd one vision, and him securing that kill. Now sitting at 5-2-1. and one. Talk about a carry alongside that Jinx, who's 4-1-5. and five. The speed boost from that Jinx and a team fight like that last one just has such a huge impact being able to chase people down. 
especially when you have something like your Hurricane and your Bloodthirster finish, you're going to be doing a lot of damage when you have the attack speed that Jinx does when she has her minigun activated. It's just a lot of damage coming down. But Caitlyn being caught out of position, the odd one going to be picking that one out. Well, it's not being caught out of position. She was underneath her turret, but people coming from around uh, the enemy jungle to flank that one. The flash uh, death sentence coming out of the Thresh, but not managing to hit anybody. And now it just looks like Thresh is standing there trying to say, like, well, that was a waste of my flash. But, you know, you got to try those things, right? And that's uh, sometimes the best plays come out of those flash grabs. But um, not managing to land that epic play. So it looks like they're going to be onto this inhibitor turret in the bot lane. I really can't see the blue team being able to uh, defend this one. It's probably just going to be a free inhib. Caitlyn is now up, so they could now fight 5v5, but I really don't think they're going to push for this one. The inhibitor is probably going to go down, but Jarvan is now in on this one, but he is the only one there, so taking a lot of damage, trying to lock people down, but it looks like it's just going to be a surrender vote. I thought there was going to be a bigger fight there, but looks like the gold lead was just a little bit too insurmountable for that blue team to get ahead. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that game. The odd one did have a great game really rough start but once again just shows that even if you have a rocky start i know how easy it is just to kind of give up on the game because you're just frustrated and pissed off at that point but keeping your head in the game making sure that you can make the plays that you want to make and would you look at that they being so far behind at the beginning in the first three minutes and now they force a surrender vote at 20 minutes so hopefully you guys enjoyed that game and i will see you guys in the next one